I'm going to start out kind of in a reverse order from my general manager's report, if that's okay with the board. Um, I had the update on the uh, notices of violation of the Regional Water Quality Control Board uh, thing last time I general managers report, but I thought I could go ahead and uh, start with that first because that's definitely a, an area of concern for the for the for the community and for the board. And what I'd like to start out is by retracting and um, apologizing to uh, Miss Tina Dickinson for the uh, the mischaracterization of uh, her involvement with the. Uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board. I think it was uh, an inappropriate uh, characterization. Um, when we met with the Regional Water Quality Control Board on February 1st, one of the things that they uh, <clears throat> articulated to us is that they're, they're not hearing from us, um, us meaning the CSD, CSD staff. Um, and they are hearing from Ms. Dickinson and, and other members of the community. And I think that uh, was a wake-up call for us. They, they, they do need to be hearing from us. And so, again, I think that was uh, an unfair statement. Se second of all, I think uh, I'd like to retract and apologize to the Regional Water Quality Control Board staff when I said that they probably feel the same way that I do. Um, again, that was a mischaracterization. Uh, I don't know how they feel, um, although I know that they feel that we're heading in the right direction, resolving some of these NOVs. And so publicly, I'd also like to retract that statement and apologize uh, to them. Now, with that being said, I, I want to just read a brief statement. I don't know how brief it is. Uh, but on the progress we've made since the February 1st meeting with the Regional Water Quality Control Board, and to assure the CCSD Board of Directors and the public uh, that we're resolving in the process of resolving and addressing uh, many of their issues. But not just to say we're working on it and resolving it, but to kind of put a plan into place that's going to help us in addressing some of their long-term concerns, but also make sure that this doesn't happen again. And I think that um, communication with them is important. I think it's probably one of the most important things, um, and also transparency, making sure that they, that they know what's going on and they, and they hear from us on a continuous and ongoing basis. So with that, um, uh, Carolyn, Bob's assistant, notified me via email on January 31st, 2017, that Mr. Matt Keeling would be meeting with Director Farmer at the Regional, uh, Regional Water Quality Control Board offices on February 1st, 2017, to discuss the sustainable water facilities uh, operations and possible notices of violation. On February 1, 2017, CCSD staff, including Bob Greshens, Carolyn Winfrey, John Alchen, and myself, uh, we met with numerous staff from the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Uh, the meeting lasted about approximately two hours, and uh, President Rice was also present. The purpose of the meeting was to discuss the forthcoming three notices of violation, discuss the need for improved communications between the CCSD and the Regional Water Quality Control Board, and more importantly, what measures the CCSD was going to put into place to eliminate chronically late reports to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Since that meeting 20 days ago, and I wrote this um, yesterday, so 21 days ago, 22 days ago, sorry, I can't do math, 22 days ago, Significant improvements have been made to address and resolve the concerns that were brought to our attention, and they are outlined uh, with that they're outlined within the notices of violation. Starting February 2nd, 2017, I have been sending the Regional Water Quality Control Board detailed daily updates regarding the efforts being made by the CCSD to improve the overall deficiencies noted by the Regional Water Quality Control Board. I hope that each of you, and I'm just referring to the board, had a chance to, to read those daily updates. Um, and let me know if you would like to get copies of those. I'll be more than happy to provide them to you. They are, they are public records, uh, and they are detailed summaries. I'm hoping that those efforts will continue, not just until we find out what our uh, notices or violations will result in, but it's an ongoing relationship with the uh, Regional Water Quality Contr Control Board. 
The first NOV was related to the timely update and submittal of the district's OOMP, which is an Operation Maintenance and Management Program. The OOMP has been updated and submitted to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Excuse me. Anytime there are changes made to this system or report, such as future installation of a fail-safe system and audible alarms for chlorine, the OOMP will be updated and resubmitted to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Additionally, when we install, when we install battery backups for the programmable logic control updates will be made to the OOMP also. So in other words, if we improve the system, add to the system, um, that OOMP needs to be updated and we will do that uh, as outlined uh, within their notices of violations and their concerns. The second note of notice of violation relates to the submittal of numerous reports dating back to 2015, as well as the annual wet weather report and the 14-day report that was due following the inundation of floodwaters entering the impoundment basin. Both the annual wet weather report and the 14-day report for the impoundment basin have been submitted to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. I met with staff immediately following our meeting with Regional Water Quality Control Board, and we discussed why. We seem to be chronically late getting our reports to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Although many variables were at play, it is important to note that all the CCSD staff needs to continue to work together as a team to make sure that we are successful in getting the reports on time. One of the first deficiencies noted was the extremely long turnaround time for the laboratories that were collecting and running the samples for both the sustainable water facility and the impoundment basin. It was determined that multiple labs were involved and that some samples were being sent as far as the East Coast for analysis. This matter has been resolved and we have significantly improved communications with the labs as well as direct and now have direct access to the lab results via the internet. We also improved communications and accountability with CDM Smith regarding report writing. CDM Smith processed the reports when they got the lab data. Since the CDM Smith and CCSD will be receiving lab data on time now, reports will be submitted in a timely manner. CCS CDM Smith has now provided us the report templates and the associated Word Excel formatting so that we can export our lab data into the reports into a timely and efficient manner. CDM Smith has also given CCSD staff access to the database at the Sustainable Water Facility that will allow us to download daily operational information such as flows, turbidity, chlorine, pH uh, for our required reports. We are looking on the ability to migrate the information into the reports. There's still some bugs to work out. However, I'm confident based on the team approach we are taking to these issues that they can be resolved prior to the, putting the sustainable water facility back online next time. Since our annual reports for the sustainable water facility in the, in the impoundment basin are due April uh, of 2017, and I stand corrected on this, it's just for the sustainable water facility, CCSD staff and CDM staff, CDM, C, CDM, CDM Smith staff will continue to work on our transition plan until the reports are finalized and submitted. It would be short-sighted on our part to completely sever ties with CDM Smith at this time relating to report writing. Staff understands that in order for the CCSD to be successful in submitting reports in a timely manner, we will need to take complete control and ownership of these, late re of these reports. With that being sa said, both the December and January self-monitoring reports have also been submitted on time to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. There are numerous other operational improvements that staff has made as outlined within my daily summaries. And again, let me know if you need copies of those. Our third four violation focuses on our impoundment bases. I am waiting for the uh, uh, I am waiting for our approval application from the South County Sanitation District regarding brine disposal, and anticipate having that agreement very soon. I received that agreement yesterday. Again, if anybody needs a copy of that, uh, please let me know. So we now uh, have a completed application, so we can dispose of brine at South County Sanitation eventually doing away with the, uh, the brine pond. I have been working with South County Sanitation District over the last few months and I'm very pleased that we'd be able to dispose of brine at their facility. 
What this means for the CCSD is we can transition away from using our impoundment basin um, and um, there was another violation noted by them uh, within um, not notifying them 24 hours in advance of the uh, impoundment basin uh, being inundated with flood waters. With regard to the re uh, requ requisite notification 24 hours by the Regional Water Quality Control Board of the, of the rising impoundment basin, we simply could have and should have done better. Additional training is, is critical in all aspects of operations. I will be directly involved with training since I have a strong technical background. Again, continuous communication and transparency between the CCSD and the Regional Water Quality Control Board is imperative. The Regional Water Quality Control Board has commented that things have gotten better since our February 1st meeting. However, the CCSD needs to be first to evaluate, observe, and call when things are not going well and when things are going, or things are going well or when things are not going so well. We have to be the first persons, the first agencies that they hear from. Since the impoundment basin has risen uh, to levels of violation due to flooding, staff has been working closely with the Regional Water Quality Control Board to come up with reasonable and cost-effective methods to emptying the basin. <laughs> staff took samples from various levels within the brine pond as outlined within Table 1 of Title 27. Um, we took uh, samples. Uh, we've been in contact with the Regional Water Quality Control Board uh, as of late of today. And uh, there was one particular sample, which was boron, uh, which has to be a 0.75 milligrams per liter in, in concentration for us to be able to dispose of it in our percolation ponds, which is a discussion we're having with them, and the boron concentration came back at four milligrams per liter. However, we resampled that, and we think that the boron concentrations that we that we noted, which is four milligrams per liter, is still really very low, was caused by the preservative put in the sample. So we've collected another sample. We're waiting to hear back from that, um, from on that sample results, and we'll continue a dialogue with Regional Water Quality Control Board in the most feasible way to lower that impoundment basin that was inundated by, by flood waters. Again, our preferred alternative would be to pump it from the uh, uh, impoundment basin over to our percolation ponds. Uh, but again, there, that has to be something that has been approved by Regional Water Quality Control Board. We have two emergency permits right now from the County of San Luis Obispo. One is we uh, uh, installed a, a temporary uh, drainage ditch to stop the water from uh, inundating the impoundment basin. And the second was for uh, a permit to pump the water from the impoundment basin into the, um, into the percolation ponds. Um, so we're working diligently, but we're also working in a manner that we want to be uh, environmentally sensitive, but cost effective also. There's about 90,000 gallons of water per inch in that pond. And, uh, and so if at all possible, uh, we'd like to try to uh, find a, a viable alternative for getting that pond down. There are several other plans and associated schedules relating to the impoundment basin that the Regional Water Quality Control Board has asked from the CCSD to complete by March 1, 2017. I've directed Bob to work with staff in, in putting these together, and we do have a draft. And uh, I'm looking it over this evening, and, and District Council will be looking it over. And so we'll be sending that to Regional Water Quality Control Board. And all of the in information and, and uh, plans that they ask us to implement by March 1st will be in place. I touched on several items related to the notices of violations, such as operations, communications, training, and collaboration. I did want to mention one other item that was discussed at the meeting with the Regional Water Con Quality Control Board, and that is staffing of the facility. Regional Water Quality Control Board feels strongly, and I concur, that the sustainable water facility needs a dedicated individual to operate the system. In the past and from its inception, the sustainable water facility has been, has been a shared responsibility. When Justin ran the facility, he also was the water supervisor. When John ran the facility, he was also the wastewater supervisor. And as part of the mid-year budget adjustment that Patrick and I will be presenting to the board in March, I will be re recommending the following actions. First, Carolyn, 
and I don't know if you've had a chance to meet with her, who is Bob's assistant, will remain a Bob's assistant. However, I will be reclassifying her position as permitting and compliance officer. Carolyn will be directly responsible for generating all the reports from the sustainable water facility to the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Carolyn will also be responsible for tracking all the lab and operational data associated with the sustainable water facility, ensuring they are properly transcribed into the necessary reports. Carolyn has a master's degree in public health and has managed clinical laboratories. Some of the less technical duties she is now doing will be redistributed within the existing office staff. Car Carolyn's salary would be proposed at 5% higher than administrative technician three. Second, I would like to proceed with hiring a chief plan operator for the sustainable water facility. When the chief plan operator is not running the facility, other operational matters within the district can be addressed by the individual. If approved by the board in March, we need to start recruiting for this critical position so that he or she can be trained and brought up to speed by the end of the summer. In closing, the last 22 days have been very challenging, but also equally rewarding. It is amazing how much we can accomplish together as staff. I feel so fortunate to be able to lead and more importantly, work shoulder to shoulder, shoulder, to shoulder with such a dedicated group of employees. So with that, Madam President and Board, that's my uh, information on the sustainable water facility. And I would like to go over a few more things in my general manager's report. If you don't, if you don't mind, Mr. Gruber, oh. I just want to, I just want to tag on really quickly to that. Um, in the meeting on the first with the regional board, um, there were two things that I, that happened there. One was it was good to to be hearing what it was that was going on on their end, and but one of the things that started off the entire meeting was we got compliments on the nitrate reduction in the in the water coming out of the back of the wastewater treatment plant and how much improved the lagoon is going to be with the with the reduction of the nitrates because it's a requirement of the advanced water treatment plant a uh, sustainable water facility to have a certain level of nitrates that's very low and we were complimented on that and i think that the the regional board was pretty happy with that the other important thing to note those violations, none of them were a dam collapsing or contaminants in the water or the water being unsafe in any way, even when they were filed late. They, were, they didn't show any danger or public health threat. And I think that's a critical thing to have. The reason you file them on time is so that we know that sooner rather than later if there is one, but we didn't have any violations for reasons of public health safety and, and I think it's important to make that note. I also want to make sure it's very clear that, that staff in the last 22 days has done a lot of work and you've provided daily reports. And I hope it keeps up that, that, you're, that you're maintaining what's been happening over the past three weeks because I think it is a good change. And communication was the huge message that I took away on February 1st was communication is important. And one of the things this board hasn't had a chance to do is even have a discussion on this and, and the implications for the general manager. And that's still going to be forthcoming. And that's something that, that, as a board, we need to be communicating with the public in addition to getting communication from our general manager and hearing what's going on and how he's managing the district. So I, I just wanted to add those those notes and, and to say that you have stepped up, and I and I really hope to see that continue because I think that you're up to it. Let's see that you are. Well, thank you. I think that the two things that you're referring to is so all of the data that we've got back, and some of these reports are, are 90, well, the most basic ones are 97 pages, and some of them are over 200 pages. And there's a reason for that because this is indirect reuse, and this kind of system has, has, is, is, uh, can be an example for the rest of the uh, California in solving their water issues. But all that data has come back uh, within the parameters, so it's, it's safe. These are, these are administrative deficiencies, and, and, but they need to be addressed and they need to be approved. 